Hello everyone. In this lesson we are going to further investigate some wave behaviors. Now in lab you should have looked at reflection and interference and we're going to retouch those. We're also going to look at a couple other things, refraction and diffraction. So we'll see those. Those are also wave behaviors. Now I call these wave behaviors because these are behaviors of all waves, whether they're electromagnetic, uh, mechanical, longitudinal, transverse, waves exhibit these behaviors. So the first thing to look at is actually reflection. And you guys looked at reflection in lab. Reflection occurs when a wave hits a boundary. And when I say a boundary, I mean a surface between two media. When a wave hits a boundary, there's a couple things that can happen. It can be transmitted, which means it moves through the boundary into the next media, or it can be reflected, which means it comes back, or it can be both. And you've seen the both if you've ever looked into a clear piece of glass and you've seen the stuff on the other side of it. But if you look at the glass, you can see your own reflection. That means some of the light is going through the glass and some of the light is also bouncing off of the glass. Okay? So if we look at a boundary where two medias meet, a wave can hit that. And if a wave hits a fixed boundary, uh, then it comes back inverted. So you guys looked at lab and you sent a single pulse down to this direction and it was clamped over here and that clamp, well when this wave gets to the other side, if it's clamped here because the wave pulls up on the clamp, the clamp pulls back down on the media and this thing flips over. So Newton's third law says, yep, we're gonna get that wave equal and opposite coming straight back. However, if there is an open loop here and this is free to move, then that wave is actually just going to return uninverted on the same side. Um, and there is nothing pulling back to make it flip over. It just, because this side, it reaches the end and this side's pulling down on it. And so it gets all the way through and then this side pulls up on it and it comes back. So uh, on a fixed boundary, the wave inverts on a loose or open boundary it comes back without inverting now this is not going to affect the wavelength it's not going to affect the frequency but it might affect the amplitude if some energy is lost here then the wave that returns is going to come back with less amplitude and you guys have heard that if you've ever listened to an echo it comes back it sounds like you but it's quieter some energy is lost um, refraction you guys are all familiar with refraction as well. You've seen it happen. If you've ever looked in a glass of water uh, and you've had like a spoon or something that's in the water and it looks like it comes in and then breaks when it comes out, that's because when the light came out of this water, it bent uh, and your eye is interpreting that as broken. So refraction occurs when a wave is transmitted across a boundary into a new media. And it's due to a change in speed. Remember, the medium of the wave is what determines the speed. So when, it, when, when a wave moves from one media to another, its speed changes, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but let's think about this in terms of, uh, say, people. If I had a whole bunch of people, and they were all holding hands, so this is a whole bunch of people, top-down view, uh, and they link up hands, and they just start walking forward, they're all going to go straight this direction, and a little bit while later, everybody will still be in a line right here. So this is like a wave moving through um, some material. Okay? Now, if this is people walking and this is on, say, a nice concrete uh, sidewalk, uh, and then they get to the grass, they get to the grass, they might slow down a little, or maybe they're walking across a beach, and this is where the water starts. Okay, so if you've ever walked into the water, you know that it's hard to walk in water. And when everybody gets here, they'll arrive at the same time. So a little bit while later, they're here. But in the next same instance, when they take steps, they're not going to go as far as fast. So their whole wavelength is going to get shorter because they can't move as fast on this side of the boundary. Well, that's OK. First, the wave was moving this way, and now the wave is still moving this way. That didn't bend. But what if all these people who are walking from the beach into the water are moving at some angle relative to the water. So over here I have water and they're moving slow. And over here I have sand and they're moving faster. So everybody's running, holding hands, and a little bit while later they're right here. They've moved some distance, but they've all moved the same distance because they can all move equally well in sand. A little bit while later they get to here. Well, this guy hit the water and he slows down, but this guy didn't yet, so he's still moving at the same speed he was before. So these guys are out here. 
Okay. A little bit while later, this is a little bit more projected, and this guy's in the water all the way now. He's really moving slow. This guy's probably slowing down a little. He's at the water. This guy's probably slowing down a little. He's at the water. This guy's still out here. This guy's still here. This guy's still here. Uh, and so we go a little bit while later. This guy's still moving slow. This guy's still moving slow. This guy's still moving slow. This guy is probably moving pretty slow now. This guy got a little bit further. This guy's still out here. So before I had this line of people, this line of people, this line of people. Now I have this line of people, this line of people, uh, this line of people. And you can see that this is actually was headed this way and now it's headed up this way. This wave bent when it hit that media. It slowed down. One side of it got behind because it's moving slower. One side got ahead because it was actually still moving faster. This is refraction. It happens because a wave hits a media, changes speed, um, and that causes one side of the wave to be able to get ahead of the other so it bends but it only occurs at an angle so a lot of times you'll see this drawn these are called wave fronts so this shows us like you can think of it as a line of crest coming in or a line of compressions coming in in a longitudinal wave and so I'm gonna draw my boundary and I'm gonna say over here is slow and I'm gonna say over here is fast if that's the case Okay, these wave fronts are all traveling at the same speed in this media, but as soon as this one gets here, it can speed up a little, which means it's going to bend forward because it traveled a greater distance. Uh, these ones are still traveling at the same speed, but now this one bends forward. These ones are still traveling at the same speed, but this one has bent forward. This one is still traveling at the same speed, but it's bent forward, right? So I should make these a little bit longer so it's easier to see. You can see when this thing went from slow to fast, this end of it, I guess I shouldn't have drawn that one in, but this end of it has gotten ahead of the other side of it, and it bent this direction. So now this wave is going this way when it used to be going this way, uh, and the wavelength went from this long, fairly short, to this long, which is longer. Okay, So the wavelength changed because we moved to a new media. However, you'll notice every single one of these waves produced the wave in the next media, which means the frequency is unchanged. Frequency unchanged. Remember, the frequency of a wave is determined by the vibration or the source that caused it. Well, since the incident wave or the incoming wave causes this wave, the refracted wave, this one's frequency and this one's frequency must match. However, since this one's sped up, it's got to cover more distance in that amount of time, so the wavelength got longer. So frequency is unchanged, wavelength can change, and it can get longer or shorter depending on if the wave gets faster or slower, and velocity also changes. So the bending of a wave as it changes media when it hits at an angle is called refraction. Uh, so bending of a wave as it changes media and it must hit at an angle and, and it must change speed. So there is a chance that it moves from one substance into another and it moves the same speed in both and then refraction doesn't occur. If it doesn't bounce at an angle or hit at an angle, then again refraction doesn't occur. Diffraction is also a bending of a wave, but it's a little bit different. It's not due to a change in media, so the wave speed isn't changing. It's because of a boundary. Uh, and there's a couple of these. So again, I'm going to draw wave fronts. So these are waves moving in this direction like this. Uh, and if I put a boundary here that's not quite a solid boundary, but instead it has a little opening, well, some of these waves are going to pass through that. Okay? But once they come out of that boundary, they're actually going to expand a little bit and they're going to bend. And so now, instead of just a straight line of waves coming out this way, I've got a group of waves going this way, a group of waves going this way, and some waves going this way. So these waves actually expand out into their boundaries a little bit. So that's the diffraction pattern that we get if I have an opening. Now, what if I have uh, a small block in the way? So I have my waves that are coming through. Will this block create a shadow? Well, a little one. Okay, This is still going to come through. This is still going to come through. Um, but as soon as it passes that, like this has been bent back a little. 
this has been bent back a little. So my next wave front looks like this, and my next wave front looks like this. And pretty soon, my shadow zone is filled in. So there is a little shadow right here where there's no wave, but eventually these waves can bend back around. So it bends around a boundary. And that's why you can hear sounds uh, down hallways, around corners, through bends. The wave can bend around doorways, it can travel through openings, and it can, it can maneuver through its environment. Uh, and some cool things happen if you take two waves or two, two slits like this and open it up. So I can take one wave over here coming in and it hits this boundary and these things start to circle out. Okay? Which is cool. But these ones also start to circle out. And you're going to get some overlap, which means this one wave produces a pattern where sometimes these waves add up and like right here, they're going to add up and I have crest to crest, crest to crest, crest to crest. I'm going to get a very intense big wave right here. But this pattern circles through, circles through, this pattern circles through, circles through. Right here I have a crest and a trough. And so I'm going to get shadow zones in here where these two waves interfere with each other and cancel out. And I'm also going to get like peak zones where the two waves interfere with each other and get bigger. Which leads us to the discussion of interference. Interference occurs when two waves interact and waves are cool because they can occupy the same space at the same time. So if I have one wave that's moving this direction and another wave that's moving this direction, when they hit they don't annihilate each other. One doesn't cancel it out. Uh, there might be a temporary spot where it looks like there's no wave on here but then the one that was going this way will continue going this way and the one that was going this way will continue moving that way. So they hit, they combine, they move past each other, they continue on. Uh, and so if I have two waves and I have one wave, I'm going to draw one wave right below the other. If I have these two waves Okay. Uh, and they're moving through the same media, you can see that both of these are trying to vibrate the media in the same direction at all times. And so the result is actually we get a wave that is twice as big. So here's my equilibrium position and now it's going to go all the way up. It doesn't change its frequency. It doesn't change its wavelength. It changes its amplitude. It combines and gives us a wave that's temporarily a little bigger and has more amplitude. Um, if I had waves that were exactly misaligned, so this one was scooted over so the crest lined up with the troughs, so there's my equilibrium position, and I'm going to draw a wave the other way. Okay. Well, if those two add up, this one's trying to vibrate this way, this one's trying to vibrate this way, they exactly cancel each other at every time, and that's going to get me no wave at all, assuming the amplitudes are equal. Now, this is actually kind of handy. If you've ever had active noise canceling headphones, what they do is they listen for a sound wave from the outside and then they use a speaker to produce a sound wave that is exactly the opposite of that. Those two waves exactly match each other oppositely at every time so any incident sound coming in gets canceled by this wave and you only hear the sounds coming from the headphones instead of outside sounds. So noise canceling headphones actually depend on interference of waves in order for uh, these things to work. Okay. Now, when the crest aligning get bigger, that's what I showed over here, that's called constructive interference. When they misalign, the wave gets smaller, and that's called destructive interference. So noise-canceling headphones depend on uh, destructive interference in order to work.